In a typical class, there'll be some children who excel at reading and others who find it difficult. So what actually makes children good readers or bad readers? Research has now shown that the way a child processes sound will determine how quickly it learns to read, with obvious consequences for the classroom. Some children who have difficulty learning to read also have problems detecting changes in rhythm. So rhythm is extremely important both in reading and indeed learning to process language generally. At Cambridge University, Professor Usha Goswami is one of the first people in the country to combine brain imaging experiments in an education research establishment, making the connection between how we process sounds and reading. Dr. Jenny Thompson is working with her on the underlying causes of dyslexia. It's commonly thought that dyslexia is a visual problem looking at words on the page, but actually the research coming out now is suggesting it's probably more of an auditory problem. So it's linking those letters that you see on the page to sounds that you saw in your head. Here a simple rhythm is played to the child, which then changes very subtly. What the child will be hearing is different sounds um, and some of them will have strong beats and others will have weaker beats. And so we're looking at how the brain differentiates between the different types of sounds. The initial research was looking at the precursors of literacy. What makes people good or bad readers? Dyslexics are obviously at the extreme end of people with reading and writing difficulties and so are useful for this kind of research. They have problems which cannot be put down to social factors or low intelligence. There does seem to be a strong relationship between children's ability to hear rhythm in speech and their reading abilities. Dr Thompson visits children who help her with the reading research by carrying out computer-based listening games. You're listening for the dinosaur that's making changing sounds. The yellow one. Okay. He was hearing two sets of sounds, one where the sounds were identical, and in one set the sounds were varying in loudness, so they were becoming louder and quieter, as happens in speech. And we were asking him to work out which set of sounds had this variation of loudness. We're hoping that through this research we can find key markers of dyslexia at a young age, so in children's ability to hear rhythms. But also it's just backing up reading instruction that teachers do. In early years, children play syllable clapping games and nursery rhymes. Our research is really showing that these kind of things are crucial uh, to later reading development. The results suggest that teaching reading and writing should place emphasis on rhyme and syllable level information, sounding out words. Playing music can help as well. For example, clapping out a rhythm in accompaniment to a nursery rhyme. Jack and Jill went up the hill. It allows the child to coordinate a natural rhythm which helps with reading and writing. Too much of it, of course, will eventually drive you daft, so don't overdo it. <laughs> 